A very good morning to you all, and thanks for joining us on News Central Television for this special broadcast of the Oshun State gubernatorial elections. Uh, we have heavyweight, uh, the APC and the PDP, uh, going head to head to determine who will be the next governor of Oshun State in the southwestern part of Nigeria. And uh, we also have our correspondents in different parts of the state. Uh, we will be giving you a live report uh, from as we proceed over the broadcast from different parts of Oshun State. I'm Benga Borowa and I'm not here alone. I have a public affairs analyst in the studio uh, with me, Mr. Adeni Kunu. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Nice to have you join us again. A few weeks ago, we were here for mm. uh, the Egyptian State elections. Yes, and, I uh, that. We have another off-cycle election. And well, uh, <laughs> what are your expectations for today in Oshun State? Well, uh, let me begin from the positives. I hope that um, the umpire of the elections, INEC, really has taken a cue from the things that transpired in, um, in Ekiti. And uh, we're talking about boot buying and some persons who were arrested. I want to believe that that itself is a lesson for INEC uh, to actually do, do everything in their power to prevent uh, what could actually affect the elections. I know that also uh, within the 24-hour cycle, the head of the National Union of Road Transport Workers in Oshun State has been arrested, and I know that that itself is associated with what uh, information that had been around so that they'll prevent any violence. And then on the side of the people, I want to believe that INEC has also made effort to inform them about the decision to play it well. Uh, if you're talking about that, you'll be looking at not allowing their votes to be bought, because if your votes get bought, you yes. actually pay the price for such purchases. Uh, and I was going to come to that, vote yeah. buying, because we were here and we commended the INEX Air Force, the yeah. PVAS, and the and way the elections yeah. uh, went by. And the only sour point from AKT just a few weeks ago was the incident of vote buying. A lot of people, you know, it's called show and tell. Mo, show, it's, show it's, and... So, yeah. <laughs> show and <laughs> and so uh, do you think INEC has put in uh, enough and civil society to educate the people? And yeah. um, would we see uh, reduced incidents of vote buying? Because I recall one of the major candidates mm. uh, just a few weeks ago said, you know, this time is going to be fire for fire. We came with dollars. Well, money. Well, well, they've asked him questions, especially after they held the mm. um, debates in, um, you know, in Oshun State. And after they had the debates, the conversation was, you talked about you have come with dollars. And what he told them was, his family is associated with the dog of... Uh, benevolent uh, yes. ex exercises, and that he was talking about the fact that such gestures would continue. But we know that of that's course. not really the meaning of what he was saying. Now, let's look at vote buying. Uh, Oshun State has, at least if I was to just count with my fingers, about five, six uh, solid minerals that actually are in commercial quantity. Uh, and on top of that is gold. Uh, when Oyetola assumed office in uh, November of 2019, uh, what he told his people actually was that uh, as I'm here, mm. I'm going to provide jobs, ensure security. I'm going to also develop certain uh, economic free zones that have been there. And of course, the, the free zone was actually put there by uh, one of the predecessors uh, in terms of Olagun Soe, uh, mm -hmm. was the one that built that. And it's expected that that will be built. But let's look at it again. When we talk about vote buying, we can't but talk about the financials. Oshun State gets an allocation of about 40 billion a month and internally generated revenue of about 20 billion in a month. Uh, that's cumulative of six, 60, 60 billion. billion. Uh, Oshun State, as of 2006 census, was over 3 million. Estimate at the moment is about 4.3. So if we add another 700,000, Oshun State will be around liquid at 6 million. How much can 60 billion do in the life of 6 million people? And that is really where the question should be. Uh, there's the OES program that the governor promised would employ 30,000 people. But, you know, an assessment has been done. Research is carried out from somebody at the Obafemi or University. I said that it has not quite achieved what it should achieve. And that what that program has done is to create room for skilled people to thrive. Uh, the government has said that one of the things it has done is to empower local businesses. And that is why even in the state, you're expected to put on Nigeria once in a week. 
Well, I'm still trying to understand the overlapping mm -hmm. between ensure, ensuring that the economy works and putting on a jury every way, because that's not going to be people outside of government, even if you use your power as a governor to say that people should actually wear them. Now, now looking at the power of incumbency yes, and uh, the, these elections that are about to happen today, uh, is it easier for an incumbent to sell this program? Because he's been there before, he's done four years, uh, than for a newcomer. Because if you look at the, the, the roll call, it's almost the same people that we had four years ago. Mr. The, the front runners, mm -hmm. uh, Ademola Adeleke yes, and uh, Buega Tola. Yes, Buega Tola. But you have to also remember that the candidate of uh, the Labour Party, yeah. uh, last one actually exuded intelligence. And at the uh, debate. Yeah, at the debate. So it showed an understanding of the economic, political, and social dynamics in that state. So we have a three horse race. I have good respect. We have a three horse race yeah. based on your perception well, of, course, that of is, the debate. But that, would it translate on the ground to vote? As Nigeria reached that level that you know people watch debate and like, look, I really like the policies of this candidate. We set agenda. We, we set agenda. To, yes. We set agenda. As, as a media. Of, yes. As a media. And one of the things we do here is that even if they have myopic understanding of what should be their checklist or the re requisite thing uh, okay. that... Adani, just yes. hold your thoughts okay, there. Uh, let's go to Osho State. I believe Oshobo, we have New Central. One of our uh, com correspondents, uh, Ben Adakede, is uh, standby to talk to us and bring us up to speed with the situation in Osho State. Uh, good morning, Bennett. I see uh, you're ready for us this morning. Uh, good morning. Can you give us a situation report of uh, where you are? All right, Benga, I'm at uh, Ward 5, Unit 5 in Oshogbo local government here in Oshun State, the state capital. Um, this clearly is one of the major coalition centers and polling units um, of the state. Um, if you can see behind me right now, uh, the ad hoc staff of uh, Independent National Electoral Commission, that's INEC, have already set up uh, their equipment uh, and, uh, you know, their movable materials, basically. We've been here as early as uh, 15 minutes before 8 o'clock. They got here early as well and started setting up. Uh, but now everywhere seems pretty empty except for what's going on to uh, my right-hand side, which is where um, different voters have come in here to check their registration. They're checking their names. You can see all the way down there, checking for their names, their pictures, and to be sure that their uh, credentials and all their information is quite correct and clear. For now, it's pretty much empty over here, but I'm sure that in less than an hour, it's going to become a beehive of activities. Now, Bernard, you arrived in uh, the Oshun State Capitol yesterday. Uh, can you tell us uh, what the mood is like in the state? Thank and uh, I'm, I'm sure you've been talking to a few of the locals, and I do understand that there are about 21,000 uh, security operators that have been deployed uh, to you know, oversee this exercise. I'm sorry, Benga, I'm unable to get what you said correctly. Could you kindly take that again? Um, I said uh, you've, you've, you've been in Oshobo since... And are the people looking forward to the elections? And uh, uh, I, I do understand that there are about 21,000 security operators that have been deployed to oversee uh, this election. So what's the mood like? Mm, Benga, I think we may need to re-establish communications again. I'm completely unable to hear you at the moment. Okay, uh, some technical issues there. We'll get back to uh, Bernard as soon as we can. Now, uh, Adini, talking mm -hmm. about elections, off-cycle elections, that's where we get to see yeah. you know, the full might of Nigerian security operators. Mm -hmm. It's a civic exercise. Uh, we said this a few weeks ago during the Yekiti state elections. Mm -hmm. Why have we, 23 years into our uninterrupted democratic experience, why are we still, you know, having such heavy pre security presence for civic exercise? Well, it is civic, but if you understand the peculiarities of the country now, uh, you may know what to leave things to chance. Of course, when you have every presence as such, it's because government has not actually done its job to get the people sensitized enough uh, about what elections truly are. And because it's a, a do or die affair, 
and those who do not deserve to be in office just want to be there willy-nilly. That is why they have to leverage the strength of security operatives at times to protect themselves and by extension their interests. But having said that, I think that it is important to understand the knowledge quotient of the people of the state and the people of Nigeria and the fact that many of them are products of a lot of violent processes. Mm. And when people have such psyche, you have to bring something in their faces to actually make them understand that you must not do this. You know, I, I, I'll get back to you, okay. and I need you to educate people on, 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 on and propose solutions to why elections shouldn't be a do or die. We'll but, but, but let's yes, talk please. to a correspondent in Oshun State, uh, Bernard Akede. Now, Bernard, uh, good morning to you once again. Uh, you arrived in Oshogbo uh, yesterday. Can you give us a situation report of how things are on the ground? And I'm sure you've talked to a few people, and I do understand that there are about 21,000 security operatives uh, that have been deployed to oversee uh, this exercise. Yes, so we did arrive yesterday, um, you know, in mid the afternoon. Um, Osho State was, uh, well, Oshubo, the state capital, was business as usual, as I said yesterday during the, the news. Um, uh, residents were going about their daily businesses. But of course, you can tell, or you could tell us that yesterday, that we were preparing for something big that was about to happen. Of course, that something big being the general elections in the state here. Um, but of course, one thing that was obvious, like we noticed in Ekiti about a month ago, was the unusual presence of heavy security within the state, combined uh, security forces, um, talking about the uh, officers of the Nigerian Police Force, Osho State Command, and others who were deployed into the state as well, uh, we were informed that there were about 21,000 police officers who have been deployed into Osho State for these elections. Besides the police, we also have uh, officers and men of the Nigerian Army, we have the Nigerian Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, we have road safety, and then we have um, some other uniformed personnel within the state here, trying to ensure that there will be peace, security, and sanity within the state. Um, already there have been predictions that the elections may be a little bit violent, uh, but because of that, uh, I, I believe that's why we have so many, uh, you know, so much presence of security. We also had, at least I counted, four surveillance helicopters hovering around the state capital of Shobuasa yesterday, and then we also were fortunate to see one gun boat that was being moved within town. I was moved to one of the riverine areas. You do know that Osho does have some large rivers, particularly the river Osho. And um, it was predicted that there could be some disturbance coming in via the waterways. Uh, so the security operatives are taking no chances. They're leaving no stone unturned to ensure that security will be top-notch provided um, within the state. Also, you know, we did speak to a few people uh, concerning the issue of vote buying, which was a serious, uh, you know, there were serious allegations during the last elections in Ekiti State. Now, in Oshun State, of course, there have been those, um, will I say, there have been suggestions that there may be vote buying uh, in Oshun State for these elections. Now, some people they did say that they're not going to rule it out. It's a possibility. They did mention uh, a particular party whom they may suspect that if at all there will be vote buying, it may be associated with that particular party. But again, um, you know, there have been uh, pressure groups, there's been the government, and of course there's been the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, INEC, calling on residents and citizens to shun vote buying, to shun people who are going to deliver or, or hand them money uh, to sell their votes or sell their ballots. And I've told them to select candidates of their choice that will rule the state and ensure that the state will achieve all it needs to achieve within the next four years. Uh, better you and the team were in Nikiti State a few uh, weeks ago. Is there any notable difference uh, from, uh, I mean, looking at, I, I know it's still early, but from what you've seen so far and the mood in, in Oshun State, is there any notable difference in the conduct of these elections and Nikiti from a few weeks ago? Yes, well, notable difference I will start with is the way the security operatives here have been deployed. Um, in Ekiti State, it was uh, it, it somewhat a little bit fearful. Um, immediately you enter the state capital, Ado Ekiti, there were several, several, several security checkpoints. Um, almost at every one kilometer there was a checkpoint uh, manned by some security agencies or the other. Um, you know, there, there also were heavy security equipment. It was almost uh, some kind of intimidation. And then we noticed when we entered the kitty around midday, there was, a sh uh, there was a public show of force, as the police would like to call it, display of force. Officers of the police, uh, of Nigerian police uh, force, went round the state 
singing, uh, uh, you know, chanting war songs, so to speak, almost like sending signals to anybody who's preparing to perpetrate any kind of evil to let them know that nothing of such um, will be tolerated. But in, in Osho State, it's been a lot calmer. You will see um, security operatives, but the, the show of force was not as, as severe as what we saw in Ekiti State. And also, um, from the day before the election in Ekiti, there was this uh, tense feeling in the atmosphere. You know, it was, it was, it was very, very tense. Uh, the atmosphere was quite thick. You could almost cut it with a knife. But here, there's relative peace and calm, at least for now, from yesterday up until now. We do hope that it continues that way. I think that's a little bit different that I can tell. Um, of course, like you also mentioned, it's a bit early in the day. Uh, when voting, excuse me, when voting commences proper, uh, then we would see how uh, the people would respond. But up until last night, everything was going, up, uh, going on uh, calmly. There, I, I was made to understand that a curfew had been put in place from 12 midnight this morning, and it's going to run up until 5 p.m. today when uh, mm. the major electoral processes should have been concluded. Thank you very much, uh, Bernard, uh, for that update. Uh, we will get back to you uh, during the course of our broadcast. And I must say, if you were acting on the intelligence uh, that you gave us, I would say you're not in proper gear. Uh, New Centre has provided, uh, we, we do, we go the extra mile in providing extra uh, gear, bulletproof vest and helmet. <laughs> and we hope it won't get uh, Bega, have bad. no fear. Should, 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 the, should the need arise? Yes. Should the need arise, we would properly gear up with our bulletproof vest okay. and um, our let's, gas mask. Let's, well, we're let's definitely hope it doesn't that we do get to that. Thank I, you very I, much, I Brennan. I hope as well that it keeps yes. safe, really. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about something earlier, uh, okay. and that has to do with uh, raising the knowledge quotient of mm. Osho people so that at least they can understand that this isn't about do or die, but it's about civilized exercise. Um, I have my worries concerning the gradual militarization of civilian exercises and it's a consolidation and a reflection of the lack of capacity uh, and one thing when you have off cycle elections yeah you can you can deploy 21,000 but when we have the general elections how do you because people are used to you know you see the heavy presence it acts as a deterrence mm -hmm, for those mm -hmm. who might want to you know cause the disrupt the exercise so when you have a general elections, and we also know the peculiarity of Nigeria, we know mm -hmm. that our security operatives are stretched. Not like every part of the country, there's in most parts of the country, there's yes, yes. Uh, security. Um, th yeah. th there's a precarious security situation. situation so yeah. what do you do during a general election where you cannot deploy upwards of twenty one thousand? Uh, depending on the state, it depends on the work you do on your citizens' mind and the culture yes. that have evolved over time. Um, apart from the 21,000, the Civil Defense Corps are deploying about 11,226 to over 3,700 and something polling units in, in Oshun State. It tells you that that itself was taken away from the chunk we have in that unit to the elections. Um, I, I was talking about something, you permit this allusion, Let's look at the the Muslim Muslim Christian Christian ticket that is making a political. But party. before we look at it, we yes. have to. My producers are telling me we have to go on a quick break, and oh, when we oh, come back, right. uh, right. we'll pick up from it's, where it's you okay. were. No You're problem. watching uh, our special broadcast here, a new central television of the Austrian State Governorial Exercise. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Right, you're welcome back to this special broadcast of the Australian Gubernatorial Elections. And uh, yes, we have a full team in the house. Uh, we still have Mr. Adine Kuno and uh, Tolu Adelero Balogun, which is joining us. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adine, for keeping it. And I've been listening to some of the conversations behind the scenes. And I think this uh, point about the demilitarization of the elections mm -hmm. is a vital one. We spoke about it when we had the conversations on, um, I believe it was AKT as it was. Now we're at 21,000. Yeah. So I know you yes, have called him. And in. then <laughs> civil defense, 21,000 plus. Yeah. Yes, that 11,226 for the civil defense call. Um, I think that it's a, a culture that evolves when people who do not have the authority or the full support of the citizens are bent on holding power. Mm. 
And oftentimes you see is that the party at the center usually will deploy such numbers to states of interest. And when states of interest get such numbers, because oftentimes it has to do with the states that their parties actually have control, it is to ensure that the opposition is kept in check and the check is often more than is expected. Mm. And oftentimes you'll find out that at times they give you the impression it is to keep the citizens in check, but it is usually against the opposition party. And there is an instruction usually, because no state governor controls the police. Mm -hmm. The control comes from the center. So that is the connection. Then at the same time, you're talking about the military. I think that it's a reflection of incompetence since the uh, resumption of the Fourth Republic, since Nigeria returned to democracy in, in 1999, uh, that the police appears to be uh, incapable of doing the primary responsibilities that it is saddled with. And some other peasants have said that we are moving up to another level where the military will be used to actually put some states under control because they are not allowing certain agenda to thrive. Please mark my words, underline it, and put it in your scrapbook because that's a fact of the matter. So we want to have them gradually, according to those at the center, be in our noses, be in our faces, leave the police. For instance, there are certain things that the police used to have, towing vans and all that, before. These days, you don't have it. There are certain um, allowances that should come to them without elections. Now, gradually, it is somewhere in Abuja. It doesn't trickle down. So I'm saying that when we see such deployment of evil police, it is simply because the party at the center usually feels that if anything may not be going in their favor, they actually can use it to control. We're talking about 30 local governments. We're talking about over 3,000 elect the polling units. We're talking about Oshun State. We're talking about 6 million people. Let's even take away those that are less than 18 years. So you'll be having about 4.5 or maybe 4 million people mm. that are everywhere up to election age. Then you are talking about about 1.5 million voters register to participate in this election. So you'd find out that it may not be very easy also to have about 1.5 million in 30 mm -hmm. local governments. Now, you're talking about local governments, Ife, Central, Oshobo, about just four out of the 30 local governments will be dealing with about 200,000 people. people. Then you have about six, seven, eight again that has a population of over 100,000 in that state. So if you look at the figures of quoted, it means that you'll be needing security presence. But do you know that we do not necessarily need to have these people there? If there was What's an the alternative? Uh, the alternative is to ensure that the average citizen of this country is conscientized into understanding that election is about your capacity and not about taking it by force. We've seen how people fight, people want to kill one another over election because they believe that is their best right. And at the same time, the attraction, for instance, that people have found in politics is not found in other profession. The motivation for getting into political I mean, office. politician is being a politician most, def a most definitely. Now I, I was I was trying to I, I was enlightening people days ago, and I said for you to become a professor on the average you need seventeen years. Five years maximum in functional universities for your PhD, ten years minimum for you to become a professor. Some universities won't give you your professorial chair until you've spent about twelve years after your PhD. Or 13. If you're an unfortunate university, you have to spend 15 years before you get your professorial chair. Like so that's 20 years before you become a professor. And yet, in every federal university, you don't take home 600,000. That is iniquitous. But politics is so attractive mm -hmm. that people would kill to have the benefit, to have the largesse. Now, let's talk about the professor who doesn't earn a million, as expected, as has been argued about. And we talk about a House of Rep members are about 27 million, a Senator about 32 million. And when they are going, you have a brand new vehicle, they give them severance benefits. So you find that so, so many you, perks of the So office. the perks of office is enough to make people deploy all the military might and security might to protect certain interests so that they can remain there. Nobody's making education very attractive. Nobody's making science and technology very attractive. Nobody is making some other areas and government attractive, but they've made politics attractive. So everything will be done to actually protect their interests. And I think that that is one part. 
But so I, I want to quickly ask you on that yes, because please. you made mention of the fact that whoever the party at the center is, the security is deployed from the center and they will look to protect their interests. So I want us to be very clear. It's not necessarily the people, the electorate that are voting that are the issue when it comes to security that they're at sec they're actually elections. They are second. They're beca parts. Because they have groups. Yes. For instance, I'd mentioned here before you came in that within the 24-hour cycle, they arrested the leader of the National Union mm -hmm. of Road Transport Workers there. Arrested with yeah. weapons. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But do not forget that in 2019 elections, we saw what some members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers did a certain polling unit around the Yanosolo area mm -hmm. and those areas, and how they were destroying boxes, papers, and it took one brave policeman to try to retrieve those. The others were nowhere to be found. And when you have such people with video evidence, the person still works free and is ill today. So I'm saying here that when you have such things happen, first it has to do with the opposition not gaining opportunity to actually have a fair ground of play, and at the same time, for some other citizens who may not be happy and want to actually make things not as it should be, because when people are grieved, they could go berserk. And I think that we have to do a lot of work. Um, I was trying to tell uh, Mega here earlier that when you have the APC, for instance, listen very carefully to this, filled a Muslim Muslim ticket, and the excuse they gave, apart from incompetence, is the fact that they want to use it to get blocked votes. It is simply because the North, as a region of the country, as a culturated as people, to not see Northern Christians as political equals. And therefore, over the years, they have been conscientized into not understanding or appreciating the fact that these people are co-equals in the political game. And if they, or anybody from their Christian group, or any other person from the Muslim group emerges as a lead or support candidate, you can still vote for the person. Mm -hmm. So over the years, they have become conscientized into not appreciating or accepting the candidacy or the deputizing candidacy of anybody who is of the Christian faith. And because that has been their acculturation and socialization over the years, it is coming to haunt them now and they don't want to take the chances. And that is why they have to go the way of a Muslim Muslim ticket because they feel that that won't happen. Then there is another thing, that they are superior to their Christian northern counterpart and they cannot maybe serve under them. These are facts. This is an international television station. But and on the other side, mm -hmm. you could also flip it and say, you, look, we've come a long way in our democracy, and religion doesn't really No, 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 count. nobody's going to teach you that. They won't teach you that because they quite do not even understand the religion. They quite do not even understand. Let me tell you, the, the, the premise of jihad is born out according to all of the things documented evidence is born out of injustice but they oftentimes are kept in a delirious state to not remember that injustice is not when it is done against you it is also when you do it against the people of other faith so they, 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 they become selectively uh, just mm -hmm. and of course they become unjust also selectively so I'm just trying to say here that all what you see play out there is because of how they have conscientized the people and they are becoming uncomfortable with it. Now, when you come to the aspect of the Osho elections, anything that is done to make people feel uncomfortable is because of certain things that you believe should come to you even when you don't merit it. Mm. And because of insecurity, you have to ensure you do everything to guard your interests even if you don't merit that particular thing that you're going for. And I think that when we talk about the citizens also, it is a work of leadership. Don't forget that we talk about everything beginning and falling at the feet of leadership. When you talk about such heavy militarization, you have to look at what is the knowledge quotient of the average Nigerian over the years. Why do we have people become very easy tools in the hands of despicable elements such that they actually make a mess of election processes? And government psychologically has also created an impression here that it is willy-nilly even if you do not merit what you want to go in for. Let us go back again to the Osho debate preceding this election. I did a careful analysis of the knowledge quotient of the people who participated in that election. And as somebody who sets agenda as an occupant of the fourth estate of the realm, I can tell you very carefully, definitely, that Lasso Yusuf 
if I were to score the Labour Party candidate, the Labour Party candidate was was on top of the charts. If I were to do an assessment, of course we know that Oyetola is more a reticent person, but that should not subtract from your capacity to demonstrate your understanding of the social, political, and economic context of the state. Okay. But we also must put this into the conversation. Bola Tinubu is from a Ragbiji in Oshun State. Forget about the Lagos Anchorage. The fact remains that the Yoruba people are very hospitable. So if you come from any part of the Southwest region, I would believe that you've actually acted as an Omoluabi. We give you opportunity to thrive. Fashola Ikiti. We gave him room to thrive here. Yeah. If you're talking about Okwaemi uh, Bamidele, Ekiti, we gave him room to thrive. The reason we do that is we, be we believe very strongly that we are a fraction of the aggregate of the capacities we allow to actually b give better, greater things within the state. Just hold okay. it all there today. Okay. Uh, talking about Iragwiji, we actually have Very perfect. Uh, New Central <laughs> correspondent <laughs> Amadin Uyi, uh, who's joining us live from Iragwiji oh, in Oshun State. Hello, good morning, Amadin. Good morning, Benga. So give us a, an idea of how things are looking on the ground in terms of registration or even if voting has, has commenced. This is about 8.40 a.m. now. So what's the situation right now? Okay, right, right now we're at uh, Iragbeji, Oloi Iragbeji Ward, which is at Boripe local government area. It's meant to be the ward of the governor, uh, Unit 2, Ward 1. Actually, we, we began observing from Oshobo, the state capital, till we got here. Uh, ironically, uh, when we got here, we realized that the INEC officials have been here since 7 a.m., but this was not the case at this was not the case at Oshobo, uh, where we passed several wards and we did not see any official. But here you can see, if you look down, uh, you, just, you you see what is happening. You see the the accreditation process has already started. I'll also take you down. Just follow me. I'll take you down. If you look at this line, uh, what we observed is that special consideration is being given to the elderly pregnant women and nursing mothers. In fact, the officials ask that they will be attended to first. So there is a line here. Uh, if you look at this crowd, the crowd is building. Uh, several of them are already on the line waiting for their turns. But right now, the INEC officials have started accreditation with the elderly and those who have special cases. The, like I said, the, uh, the accreditation process has already started. It is expected that the governor who happens, who will be voting at this polling unit, will be here between 9 to 10. But that has not deterred or that has not hindered uh, activities from going on at this particular world. All right. Thank you so much, Amadine. We will continue to check in with you, and especially if the governor does come uh, to come and vote particularly there, so we'll come back to that. We know Amadine is there. We have mm -hmm. uh, Ni as well, and we also and have Ben. Uh, so spread out across the state. So let's mm -hmm. come back to some of the issues. Yes, um, we've talked about the militarization, the security situation, which mm -hmm. is a larger conversation for all of Nigerians to have, really. Um, but we also have to look at the numbers. I like numbers in these conversations. So we're looking at about 1.5 million there, about registered voters yes. in the last election that they had and again this is another off-cycle election which mm. allows us to really focus mm -hmm. on the issues in Oshun yes, State yes. Um, so there are more voters expected to participate than in 2018 when just under 700 and uh, just over 767,000 of the registered 1.6 million voters came out what do we anticipate if you look at some of these wards the numbers don't look really um, I guess encouraging early on, but maybe mm -hmm. they too realize that INEC officials will come late. There's no point in me hurrying. Voting will go on to about three or four o'clock, and there's opportunity for everybody. But what do we anticipate in terms of the, the voter turnout in the long run? In the first place, I think that uh, INEC should um, stick to time. Uh, stick to time, but you know, um, Amadine Uyi said something. In the course of moving to Ragbiji in Borobe local government, as I said, they did not find INEC officers at certain other polling units. Mm. So for you to have actually found them here, I think it calls to question the symmetry of time with regard to how elections are supposed to be conducted. 
and the people who actually are here, they need to question if at all they didn't go in the transportation provided for others. Because I know that if you're going to certain areas, then you have to move at the same time. So that actually gives me concern. That is one part. Then you're talking about the aspect of, uh, you know, the voter turnout and all of that. I think that we need to really school a lot of people participating in elections. And I've said it time and again on different platforms that INEC must try. I, I, I have decided to lend my consultancy services at very affordable amount because it's, my, it's, it's actually my intellectual property. INEC can create just podcasts, five minutes each, short video clips, snippets on their platforms where everybody who turns 18 is able at a button to go on INEC platform and read up how he or she becomes eligible, how the franchise and election actually goes, and what he or she is expected to do to have a voter card. The pr these are basic... Uh, civil society and media can also... No, I don't... I don't you know, is it yes, our please. primary responsibility? No, no, we it, support. Quite yeah. frankly, it is INEC's responsibility... And National as, Orientation as, Agency. Uh, both... both, both, both Agencies of government mm -hmm. have these things on their shoulders. The person leading INEC is a professor. Oh, let's, has, we're going to hold you on that, but oh, we'll come back to oh, this right. because I think it's very vital. Okay, but we have Bernard Akede. Um, he is in Oshobo right now, yes, also monitoring the elections, and he's going to give us an update. Bernard, uh, let us know what things are looking like where you are. Again, another primary school or something like that for you, looking reminiscent of the last elections we covered. So, mm -hmm. Ben, what's going on? All right, now, um, from the last time I came on live, uh, where the ad, ad hoc staff of INEC were basically just setting up, now the, the, the activities have begun proper. Um, you can see a line behind me here, or just to my right, uh, you know, voters have come out and they've been asked, asked to stay on one line. Now, uh, just a few minutes ago, we caught that on camera, you probably will see it later, um, the ad hoc staff of INEC greeted the voters and then read out the rules uh, you can say the terms of engagement, if you like. I uh, read out everything that they need to do and they need not to do. Now, they have been told what the elections are about. They've been told how to go about the elections. Oh, by the way, uh, there was somebody interpreting in Yoruba language while another person was speaking in English so that everybody is carried along. Um, uh, they have been told how to line up. Just one line will be accepted. The only line that could be created will be for people um, who are physically challenged or the elderly or nursing mothers or pregnant women. But besides that, everything is business as usual over here. They've been told that um, it's supposed to start by 8.30, which they did start, and that it will close by, I, I believe, 2 p.m. Um, so by that time, no other person will be allowed to join the queue. Um, the queue will be maintained regardless of how long it is, but nobody else will be allowed to join the queue. So accreditation will commence right now, immediately after which voting, or should I say simultaneously, voting will also go on. So right now you can see, um, I just stepped out, out of the way, what you're looking at is elderly people starting their own accreditation first and then their voting will commence. Of course, the Beavers machine that was used or that was launched in the AKT election is also going to be used here. Um, it's recorded quite a significant amount of success in AKT and we believe and hope that the same will happen here in Oshun State. So, so far so good, you can see already that um, uh, the voters have started uh, Tom printing, and they started the process. They've been told where to place their ballots after, after casting their vote. Uh, they've been told how to step away. Um, the party observers are also here. Uh, the party agents, I beg your pardon, are also on one side observing what's going on to ensure that there are no anomalies and no funny practices um, going on during this election. And I believe that it's, it's going to be this way almost across every polling unit of the state from 8.30 this morning. All right, uh, Ben, uh, thank you so much for that uh, quick situation report. If anything happens, definitely we'll be checking in mm -hmm. with you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Now, Adeline, you. can you just put us through the process uh, for people that might just be, uh, that might be tuning in uh, for the first time? How, does, how do we conduct this exercise from you know, accreditation to the counting of ballots? How does I, I, it... I think that Bernard oh. has actually taken yes. the first yes. part, which is that when election officers come to the polling center, they brief the people on what they have to do. Uh, the Beavers has made it easy. You get accredited, and of course, you get ready. Uh, one of the things they usually will do is if they are not able to you know, get things sorted out with your thumb, then they have to you know, use the facial recognition to do that. 
Having done that, then you get ready to participate by voting. And after you've done that, as advice, you just can't walk away. Because usually when collation is done, the party agents are there. Although you have to maintain a distance, mm. the party agent will definitely have to witness the counting of the ballot papers to actually know that the ones that are rejected are rejected. The ones that are for each of the parties also gets properly sorted and it is counted. It is announced. Then everybody signs and agrees to the fact that that has been done. Every voter can also just stay at a distance. The party agents are the ones that are closest to them, but within ears shot, you can actually stay because it is your destiny after all. So why do you want to walk away from it? Now, we talked about beavers making the process faster. Mm -hmm. So how come the AKT election result was announced at 3 o'clock uh, the next day? Well, that is a question that I need to really answer mm -hmm. by tidying things properly. AKT has about 16 local governments or thereabouts, less than the local governments, which are 30. Mm. It is also not as big as Oshun State. It therefore means that I hope we don't have these results announced seven days after. If we found out that the announcement of this election comes maybe three days, as we had it in Ekiti, then we really need to question the officers that went to work in Ekiti, because um, we have to look at efficiency. We have to also look at the coordination of the team leads at the respective centers where they eventually got these things to where they announced it. So I think that efficiency is one of the things. Now, if you look at what Amadine Uyi said, it's a factor that I'd like to also refer to. Um, some topography in Oshun differs. The same way you have certain areas that are up the hill and people need to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget that vehicles, if, not, if it is not in top shape, can actually break, uh, down. So break down in the course of moving to that place. So, all those things must be put you together. You also have river Rhine areas too. Yeah. You say what? River Rhine areas. River Rhine areas where people, and some people really have water fright. Quite frankly, some people, immediately they see water, they it's, just, it's they, they just lose it here. <laughs> and it's really unfortunate if at all you have to take somebody who is not, you know, from such areas. And this is where INEC has to really do another work that is very, very important. When you deploy your officers to areas that are river Rhine, you really need to have proper identities on them to show that they don't have such fright because that itself could compromise. We know that there had been accidents this past week on water. And at this rainy season where the water levels are higher, higher. the risk levels are also high. So what is INEC doing to ensure that the risk is actually reduced and ensuring that people are really safe going distance on water? So I think that that is also part of what we have to look at. Basically, um, INEC has a lot of work to do, and this election, don't forget that we had our remarks from the elections that held. Mm -hmm. This is also going to be another thing that will make us another call grade. INEC, mm -hmm. whether good, whether it's A+, plus, whether it's C-, minus, maybe E-, minus, or just an E. We're waiting for them to see, but I'm concerned that you don't have uniform presence at respective local governments. Yeah. It therefore means that if you're going to travel 15 kilometers from the city center, where the sensitive materials were being distributed and another person is going to go five kilometers then you that will be heading 15 kilometers should set out some hours earlier yeah. considering the distance so that you see Martin, you talked about figures that is where figures come in you should be able to do such permutations i keep time a lot i drove here in 38 minutes i came from the mainland i sat there from outside the gate here i spent two minutes i sat there 40 minutes i got here I'm saying that such figures are very key when we analyze things like this. And that is why you need everybody in every sector to work in government organizations. You need statisticians. They must put this thing. You need psychologists. Do you really have to put these things in perspective? And elections are such as determines people's life and the country's development and existence. You can't joke with it. You really can't joke with these things. And that is why INEC must understand that is leadership. Don't forget before uh, the last break, we talked about the leadership of INEC, and I was talking about the professor who heads. Mm. When they say something begins and ends with leadership, if I do not have certain vision, if I have the privilege of heading an organization, my horizon will, go to, it will be limited to how much I know, how much my worldview is, and I keep it there. Because of that, let me go back to the Arek Beshola Oyetola era, Coming to them, when Arek Beshola was there, 
and they were financial crunches. He owed workers salaries. In fact, from 2018 up until the time that uh, Oyotola came in, people were paid certain percentages from their money with a promise that when things get better, somebody was leaving pay. office for goodness sake in 2019 and he owed certain salaries. Of course, pensioners were not paid when they should be paid and the amount they should be paid. When Oyotola came in, he moved away from that first. He has not owed salaries. And when they asked him about the arrears being owed, he said it wasn't his administration that owed it. Forgetting that, for goodness sake, the government is, the government is in continuum. Whether that, any party or not. Mm. That, that, is the first, that is the fourth goof from somebody who understands the dynamics. Then secondly, pensioners were saying, you didn't pay us. After the outcry, he released 500 million some weeks ago for them to pay. Now, workers never got any promotion exercise on the Arek Beshola. He had promotion exercise. Now, the money they gave them, they backdated it. They are still owing again with the promise that they, they are going to soon have another, another promotion exercise. So he found out that there are, there are lots of issues along that line. Between 20... Okay, one of the things that also happened with him was when Arek Beshola was there, he removed single-sex schools. He made sure that everybody at, maybe if you're in primary school, you Correct. wore the same uniform yeah. and all that. Oh, it all like came in 2020 and had to upturn that because he felt lots of people felt their interests were God and they believed that his responsibility happens to be towards his people than any other person. Because of that, there was a fallout. Some of the things that his predecessor felt were laudable policies. Even though they were from the same political party. Well, 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 we've seen that happen. And don't forget that in the history of Washington State, it's the first time that a governor in the same party will be handing over to another governor. And that is the first time it happened. But they fell out. Uh, when we talk about the visit of the APC leaders to Washington State uh, before the end of the election, uh, Arek Beshala was absent. The question was asked, why was he not there? He said he wasn't invited. And so things like that, there's a fallout. But I also believe that but it is... But then again, it's Minister of Interior, and we see what is happening. And there are security uh, the situations. Are exactly. Yes. So you can uh, excuse I, I, him for that. Well, <laughs> I, I agree. I could excuse him for that. But at the same time, other people from further parts of the country participated in that. So how do we, So yeah, how do we, exactly. how, so how do we accommodate <laughs> such excuses? You're more or less like the person who sired him to power. So it then becomes questionable if you're absent. Do not forget that he obviously supported... You know, Adelti, yeah. who was against him at the primary, he also, with the Adelti team, took Oyetola to court, wanting to prevent him from participating in this election. So when a child cries mm. or dies in the morning, and the witch had cried at night, then somebody took the skin away. Now, didn't so, he? Let's talk Okay, before we yes. get to that, yes. let's make sure we let people know what visuals they're seeing on the screen. Uh, these are coming in from Iraq Beji as well as uh, Oshobo as well. So we can see that the crowd there at the governor's ward mm -hmm. is starting to increase a little bit more. You know, accreditation is on. Um, again, we're hearing from our reporters on the scene, particularly in Oshobo, that INEC officials gave the crowd um, why they're there, the terms of engagement. There is some preference for uh, aged, the elderly people, nursing mothers, those who may have disabilities, as well as pregnant women. Um, so that seems to be something that we saw from Ikiti as well. It's and continuing, it's and it's very proper. And it's nice to see it's reinforced throughout these elections that mm -hmm. we've been seeing recently. So the conversations will continue. Benga, you had a question. I want to take yes. uh, Adini <laughs> up on something he said as well. That's why I was going to ask you how, because I mean, the whole point of this exercise is to make the lives of uh, citizens of Oshu State better. Yeah. That's what a democracy does. And uh, I, I would like us to interrogate the quality of the campaign mm. and of what the candidates are promising. Because mm. uh, a, a lot of it seems to be drowned out in, you know, it's party almost issues. Jam it's jamboree party issues, you know, personal oh, uh, mm. and issues local. and all yeah, of that. You know, <laughs> it's either portable or David Doe, you know, uh, and all of that. Are you impressed with the quality of conversation we've had uh, and the policies and what this uh, people are promising? Because the only time where we, you know, seem to get an idea of what they have to offer is, was during the debate. I, I'm worried, really. I'm mm. worried because um, even when you know that you have a very vibrant youth population in Oshun State, it should not, uh, you know, get to the point of you know, the unacceptable. Portable was there, and he had to pull his trousers down with his crotch bulging everywhere. 
I do not think that that itself is a reflection of proper politicking. Yeah. And but it's I an think, entertainer. No, no, it's an well, entertainer, entertain not, with, not, not, not with your crotch in the open. Uh, what's the message? Such crotch exposure <laughs> passes to people who want to participate or vote in an election. And oftentimes, Davido participated in that. He didn't go naked or half naked. Mm -hmm. He, of course, entertained. We know that in every election the world over, you'd always have music as an accompaniment of the campaign. Mm -hmm. In highly civilized societies, you have to get people excited. If there's no excitement, there's no momentum. If there's no momentum, nobody, come, nobody rallies around you. We know that that is a psychology and how things go in an election. But I am concerned when you bring such persons to that extent, even if the, see, and that is, it, it boils down to understanding the context of entertaining people. If you entertain a mixed crowd, that is not a political rally. You can, of course, put your butts everywhere and be a fella. But when you are talking about an election that is supposed to be issues based. Optics matter. Optics really matter. And that is why when people assume certain positions in life, you watch where you eat, you watch how you talk, then even when you have side chicks, you also know where to meet because this day social media How does doesn't side forget. Chicks enter this no, no, they are, see, see the, in France, for instance, you are permitted to have a side chick. And mm. illegitimate children and get a share of an estate. The, well, I am just saying that some things mm. happen in highly civilized societies. When they found out mm. that these gentlemen in political offices in France cannot just but look at some other person, okay, you really, really can just have somebody that keeps you warm when Madame is far away. <laughs> it's a fact in the French system of governance. I'm not saying that to encourage it, but I'm saying that people subject their politics and their structures to reality. To so they look at social reality. Social reality. Mm. So, for instance, France is the first person that allows mouth to mouth kiss, even if there's no, if it, if his relationship is platonic. So empirical evidence shows that people always want to have their hands on some people that are not their wives. Lord, let's keep their hands somewhere. Oh, okay, I think we're going too far to the... I'm, I'm about to get lost. No, 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 come back. <laughs> let's come back to that I'm, I'm simply saying that <laughs> we took it from somebody that was improperly exposed. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I connected that. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, has this been about issues based? I think that on a scale of 1 to 10, it's 4. Has this been about entertaining people? On a scale of 1 to 10, it is 7. Has this been about responsible power and authority being sought from the people? From a scale of 1 to 10, I think it's about 3. But do you know that everything that you've scaled can actually be widened to the larger presidential elections mm -hmm. that we're on Most the path Most definitely. To. It's always an aggregate of what we are to expect. So basically, we have elections, whether they're at the state level or the presidential level or the federal level, because yes, it's not please. just presidential, that lack discourse, lack debate, lack effective recognition of issues, mm -hmm. and we want to be holding rallies, and, and no, no shade to any uh, entertainer who wants to, with their full chest, support anybody, but we end up entertaining, and then we don't get to the issues. But I want, this question always comes up. Yes, is it because the electorate is not demanding those answers? Our politicians will, well, not our politicians, any politicians around the world will get away with what the electric exactly. allows them Giving to them what get they away want. with. I, I think that um, the business of conscientizing people when it comes to election is a very serious business. We're back to this. We have to get back to because it's an inexhaustible concern. Mm. When you shore up education system, are you carefully examined? Excuse me, this is it. Uh, education is supposed to be tailor need made such that when you look at certain problems in society, then you create a curriculum that gets people up to a knowledge level to solve their problems. You don't just get education in vacuum. You get education to develop yourself, expand your value level, and use the value capacities to solve problems. But a situation where we're not looking at the electorate as a segment of society that is most important, critical to the development, mm -hmm. And of course, we will not do anything to ensure that that critical sect of a country or of a state has a level of intelligence that will be able to make them demand of you that these are the things we want. And in fact, this is it again. The crop of people that are on the campaign team of every political party and the kind of people they are, the kind of exposure they've had, will go on to translate into the kind of political rallies that they hold. Mm. If they know that over time, 
they have done a lot of work on the minds of the people that they will be actually, you know, speaking to, then they will begin to give them the kind of rallies that demonstrate that indeed we are here to work and evolve ideas that can solve the problems available. If they can get that critical mass of people that yes, believe in that ideology. They, do, they are there, but this is it. Oshun State has unarguably some of the most intelligent people in this country, without a doubt. But when they see that it's a charade, most of the elites, we'll back. the technocrats will pull back. And there are certain things you do not but they're do. they're in the minority. No, they are not in the minority. The noise, the cacophony you find there mm -hmm. has actually drowned them out. They are not in the minority. You can't but have a mix of people. And um, don't forget, as I've said since the beginning of this conversation, leadership sets agenda. The same way the media has also set agenda. When we have a lot of recklessness out there, you contain the recklessness, you sieve the madness, and you put to people the ideal. You could have the reality, but the reality doesn't solve problems at, at times, but the ideal does. Because in reckless situations, the ideal leaves you, the reality knocks you over, and you come back to scale one. Many of the countries that we've had the privilege to visit, and that we are considering maybe we to jack pass others, mm actually understood the reality and the ideals. If the reality is negative, we begin to move towards the ideal because the ideal sets up agenda of development in any civilized society. This country produced the first Nobel laureate in Africa. Literature is about learning. Learning is about knowledge. Knowledge is about a standing feet. When people call you by certain names, you leave the billing of your identity. And that is the science of politics that many people don't understand. 